Hello and welcome to the 28th episode of The Realist Podcast, a podcast about our real list. I'm your host, Ellis. And I'm your host, Gloria. And this week we have a selection for me. This is actually something I've been wanting to watch for quite a while, but as we did sort of a string of action movies, um, and recently I, I listened to the episode of the Black Box Down podcast about the crash that inspired the airline crash in this movie, um, plus uh, that combined with the fact that this movie was about to go off Amazon Prime, like literally this week, so if you wanted to watch it, when this comes out, maybe you have, like, one day to do it, if you have Amazon Prime Video, to do it for free. Yeah, 26 um, hours, last yeah. time I saw. Oh, really? Yeah. Yikes. Okay, then it's, then it's definitely gone by now. Um, this is a hell of a movie. This is Flight, starring Denzel Washington, um, written by uh, John Gatkins, directed by Robert Zemeckis, um, produced by a whole host of people, and, of course, starring Denzel Washington, Don Cheadle, Kelly Riley, who was also in um, Sherlock, Holmes. Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows, which we've done a podcast on, John Goodman, Bruce Greenwood, and uh, Melissa Leo. John Goodman threw me off guard. I did not expect him to be in this movie. <laughs> I mean, he fits the part, though, doesn't he? He does fit the part. <laughs> he fits the part really well. I was like, oh, look, the dude's here. You know, I remember being, because I saw this movie in theaters ten years ago. I remember being as off-put by his entrance then as you seemed to be last night when we watched this movie. It's John Goodman! You don't expect Fred Flintstone to be walking in and (laughs) feeding a guy cocaine. Yeah, and... I mean, on some level you do, because look at the guy. But, uh... It just, you know... I don't know, man. I don't know. It's not the thing you expect in this movie, even though the movie opens up with him doing doing a line of drugs. Yeah. Coke, alcohol, and, you know. Sleeping with a stewardess. Yeah. Someone who you probably assume is a prostitute at first. Yeah. uh, And then it's revealed, oh, they work together. And their relationship is not. It's it's not as forefront, but it's touched on a little bit at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then becomes very very important at the end um after the crash after she's dead yeah um and he's given the option to pin the blame on On a dead person yeah or take the blame himself which if he if he took if he blamed it on her i would have been like he's a straight asshole and he deserves to rot in jail well it's not like he isn't one to begin with you know he's not a very He's not a very good person to begin with, but if he blamed blamed it on the dead person, I'd be like, wow, you deserve to rot in hell. Yeah. Well, fortunately, he ends up in jail anyway. Um, there are a few things about this movie. Again, it's been ten years since I saw it originally. Mm-hmm. A lot of things I'd forgotten. I forgot. Basically, the crash scene was the only thing I remembered. Um, I mean, the, that... crash, the crash scene is pretty, like, uh, memorable. Yeah. Uh, although I did not remember how long it went on for. What, the whole, um, the whole duration the whole of this, the whole sequence? Yeah. Um, it's a really intense sequence. It's it is. It's a really it's, it's great scary. sequence. It's scary, and, and, uh, and thinking that we're gonna be on a plane in, a, in like, a couple of months scares the shit out of me. Yeah. I don't like it's flying. It's not gonna be like this, okay? I hope the fuck not. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, on the bright side, the actual incident that this is based off of, they couldn't recover the plane and everyone died, so, um... Well, then. Yeah, it probably will not be like this movie, um, on any level. But, that is, you know, it is worth pointing out, as I mentioned before, that this is, um... This is... Based on a real incident, it's Alaska Airlines Flight 261... Uh, where the plane had the same mechanical failure that this plane has in this movie, um, but unfortunately it was not recoverable. They did invert the aircraft to to buy them a little bit of time, but it was not recoverable, and the plane crashed Mm -hmm. into the Pacific Ocean. Um, Oh, this is the plane that crashed into the Pacific Ocean? I mean, there are many planes that have crashed into the Pacific Ocean, but um, probably not the one you're thinking of, because that was... That was... um, Let's see. When was this incident? 
This is a nine. Oh, sorry. It was January thirty first, two thousand. Oh yeah. Was sorry, the Alaska Airlines it. crash? You're probably thinking of like MH three seventy or something like that. One of the really really famous ones over the last few years. Um, Could well, be. few years, like the last decade. Um, but yeah, this there was a lot of things that I didn't notice, and a lot of ways that the movie does a really good job of lining itself up. Yeah, I wish I wanted to talk about that. How you know it shows, um, what was her name, Nicole, mm-hmm. and then it shows Whip, and then it shows them slowly but surely getting to meet each other. Yeah. And in the in the beginning, I thought that Nicole was Whip's ex. I did too, um, because I didn't remember much of this movie, and you're just sort of introduced to her as, oh, this is an important female character. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing that sort of took me out of that was well this doesn't seem like the same person we were talking to and where's the kid you know yeah, i was wondering I was like, oh, where his son was i was like where is his son his almost 15 year old son but we do meet the actual family later they yes they hate him uh yes. rightfully so um i'm assuming they got a divorce because of his drinking problem among other things i'm sure yes the drinking the cocaine the you know Probably adultery, probably cheating. Possibly, yeah. Uh, and he had weed in, in in the cabin, didn't he, as well? At his so, dad's cabin, yeah. yeah. Um, which, boy, that was a cool place, and I totally forgot that whole segment of the movie. I like that little, like, in the middle of nowhere, 68 acres, just <laughs> little plot of land. Like, I loved that. That's so. It was super cute. The house was super cute. I thought it was, like, very cottage core farmy vibes. Mm-hmm. And... I find it funny how the 68 acres stuck in your head because you read that on the sign when it came up in the movie. You're like, whoa, 68 acres. Yeah. And an acre is not that big, it turns out. Uh, I was doing the math the other day because I just didn't have any frame of reference. It's like, wow, that's smaller than I would have expected. How much is an acre? It's like 200 feet by 200 feet. It's the size of a football field in terms of square square footage. Oh, so that's really land, not land that, area. That's not that big. No, it's not, but... I mean, if you have 68 football fields, that's big enough. Yeah, but it's it's enough to put an airstrip on, I guess. Yes, this is true, because the father was in the Navy. He was a Navy pilot. And so was... Actually, so was, I don't know if he was in the Navy or if he was in the Air. He was in the Airborne, so that would be Army or Marines, I think. And then... Whip and Charlie was in the, in, was in the Navy together. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I got that mixed up at the beginning. It's not really important what branch of the service, but, you know, he was a military pilot, and so was Denzel Washington, and so was um, uh, the other fellow, Charlie. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was his name. Um, this was uh, filmed in 45 days on a really tight budget, too. Which How that's much was the that's worth uh, thirty one million. Oh wow! I, is that that's cheaper than all of the movies we've watched so far. Yeah, I was gonna compare it to the Cornetto trilogy, but yeah, um, it, it's probably the cheapest movie that we've watched. Uh, which you wouldn't, you wouldn't, uh, sort of assume that. Certainly not based on the casting, but also. Oh yeah, no. Just... Denzel Washington's a big name. And so is Don Cheadle because. Mm-hmm. When did this movie come out? 2012. 2012? Okay, so what, how many Avengers movies were already out by then? Uh, that's a good question. Because I mean, Don Cheadle wasn't... was in almost all of the, all, because he's, um, he's the Iron Patriot. Yeah, but the Avengers came out in 2012. Okay. The same year. But what? Uh, uh, so he was, in, you know, he was in maybe, what, three Marvel movies before this? Because he was in Iron Man Two and three? Maybe. You're going to have to look up Don Cheadle's yeah. like, acting history. <laughs> but, you know, I, already, I even already had it open and then I clicked away from it. But he was in a lot of stuff already. I mean, he was in uh, Ocean's movies. Um, yeah, Iron Man 2 is where he came in. So he was in two and three, presumably. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Avengers mm-hmm. that same year that Flight came out. Um He's 57 years old. He does not look it, really. No. I mean, in this picture, he kind of does, but... I mean, and, and this was 10 years ago. I mean, that he was 47 then kind of blows my mind. Because mm-hmm. he looks he like looked, he's in his 30s. He lo- maybe early, maybe late 20s. Yeah. 
honestly. He, although he looks a little younger in this movie than he does in Flight uh, in uh, The Martian, which is kind of funny. He was it must in the be Martian? the yeah. He was um, Rich Purnell. You remember that the guy who did the calculations? No, that was Childish oh, the Gambino. Childish Gambino. Oh, okay, that's not okay. Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, get your people. Get get your. People I'm sorry. Straight. I don't do actors properly. I don't know people. I know them when they show up on movie posters. That's it. What is Childish Gambino's actual name? Donald Glover. Donald. Gl- okay, they're both Dons. That's why. They're both named Don. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. His name's Don Cheadle. His name's Don, which is a short form of Donald. Don't try which to. Donald don't try Glover to, is. Don't try to justify this. Oh, uh, okay. I guess I will just pretend that I don't know. I just made it up that I screwed it up, and there's no rationale for it at all. You just don't know actors, darling. No, you're right. I don't. But this is why. Or I was okay, confused let's, let's because of this reason. No, about... no, we're going to talk about my uh, dyslexia with regard to actors. No, okay? we're not doing this. Uh, we're not doing this. Let me just become a walking IMDb page app. Oh my god. Website. Can we just talk about the movie? Operating system. Can we talk about the movie? Alright, what do you want to talk about? Oh, this is your. All right, movie. we're talking about IMDb some more. No, this is your movie pick. You talk about the movie. Uh, similar to uh, this is also the movie that like. This is the only thing I know Denzel Washington from, basically. Uh, oh, really? And the which is the only reason that the jokes in um what is that movie, uh Game Night made sense to me about like oh I slept with Denzel Washington when we were on our break and then it's revealed that she didn't sleep with Denzel Washington she just slept with someone that looked like him and I was like oh yeah Denzel Washington from Flight that's the only thing I know him from He played in Remember the Titans I haven't seen that I I don't know he if He looks I've depressed seen... in that photo go up <laughs> Go up Look at that's a terrible photo that they chose He's like uh I mean, he was on alcohol and coke or whatever. Where there's no like cinema, like you know, thing for him. Where's where's his, his where's career? his list of movies? Yeah, you're gonna have to go to Google for that. Because... What? This is no. Oh, he was in Unstoppable. That's right. I have seen him in something else. He was in, uh... in Two Guns Equalizer, Magnificent Seven. Book of which Eli. I seen. He was in the Book of Eli. Um, I haven't seen. That's that's on the list. This. Yeah, there's too many things I haven't seen, uh, but that's part of why we're making this podcast. Anyway, all right, so the thing that I wanted to point out was when he goes to the AA meeting Mm -hmm. with what's-her-name? With Nicole. He's walking out the door as the guy is talking about, my lies would walk me right out that door, whatever. Yeah, I noticed that. It was the perfect parallel, and obviously it's not by accident. I love how, I I mean, I don't don't want to say I love, but... Um, he looked, when, when they were in the AA meeting, he looked just like he was getting angrier and angrier, and he was like, you know, I feel, he was probably thinking, oh, I feel singled out, I hate it here, I'm gonna go. And then yeah. he leans over, and he's like, alright, I'm gonna leave, and then he leaves. I, that was a great scene, which I had completely forgotten, of course. Um, and yeah, and the significance of it, and the fact that you meet him and Nicole on their their lowest converging paths yeah and at their lowest but at their converging paths of like she's actively trying to better herself and she ends up doing it. yeah and he's not he just wants to drink and do drugs and you know not do any better for himself and he's all wrapped up in this case because what they what did he say uh don Cheadle's character said that everybody was looking at him yeah well Rightfully so, because he was he was the guy who saved the day, but he was also drunk and high, flying an airplane. And he also had his lawyer kill the talk screen. Well, yeah, uh, that's his job. Uh, but I, you made a you made a note about halfway through the movie, or you know, probably like a third of the way through the movie. It's not a short movie. Um, about, like, oh, and they're gonna 
get together and help each other get clean. I honestly thought that they were going to help each other get clean. I thought that, you know, from the stairwell scene where it was him, Nicole, and the cancer patient guy. He was great, by the way. He was great. Um, Aspired cancer patient guy. (laughs) Well. Except without the cancer. (laughs) Get his attitude. Get his attitude, yeah. Um... But I, I thought that, you know, they were going to help each other. You know, they saw that they were both at each other's low, at the lowest. And, you know, Nicole wasn't in a good situation anyways because her landlord was hassling her for rent. And she obviously didn't have the rent. Yeah. And, um... She's doing drugs. She's and doing she's, drugs. Her she... dealer's trying to get her to do porn. Oh, God. And, uh... But I thought, like, you know, he was going to invite her to come live out on his dad's farm, and they were going to help each other get clean, and he was clean for a while, and then... A while, like a day. (laughs) Well, no, he was clean. Remember when he first got to the farm, he dumped out all the alcohol, and any slight of convenience to him, he would break. And -hmm. that's what happens when you're in recovery. Yeah. What happens when you're an addict? Any slight of inconvenience to do, you're like, shit, I need this, and you go back to it. Well, it's not even like he was trying to quit at that point. It's because he, he knew there would have been a talk screen coming up, and he was trying to Make dodge sure. that. Yeah. You know? And then when he found out, oh, you know, they took the hair and skin samples and blood samples and did the talk screen for you while you were still in the hospital, um... That's when he's like, oh, well, screw this. You know, I can go and get drunk then, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm screwed yeah, and it but doesn't matter. Also... <coughs> <coughs> oh, jeez. They also advised him to stay away from liquor stores, bars. Um, what else? Liquor stores, bars. I think that was it. Yeah, but basically don't be seen buying or drinking alcohol because we don't want the media on your case about, like, oh, the drunk pilot, whatever. Um... Which makes a lot of sense, but I wanted to get to the idea of, despite the fact that this, he's an a-hole, you know? He's a a jerk throughout the whole thing. He's a drunk. Yeah, he's a drunk, he's a jerk, he he can't really, like... But they managed to make him a protagonist you have sympathy for, despite the fact that he's a complete... Didn't they say he was a hero? Oh, yeah, well, because he saved all the people on the plane. Um... But, like, we as the audience have sympathy for him because we want to see him get better. We want to see him do better. And we know that, you know, and even his his co-pilot, who is very standoffish on the whole situation, rightfully mm. so, acknowledges that, like, no, if you hadn't been on that plane, we would all be dead. Yeah. Um, it's not your fault that it crashed. Um, but you, you know, he, he's he's still an addict yes know? he's still addicted and he doesn't want to get the help and that's most people until they've hit their hit their lowest mm-hmm. or until they necessary until they ultimately have to get clean or they're gonna end up in a place where they don't like themselves either dead or in prison where they have to where they're forced to get clean mm-hmm. and that's where he ultimately ended up he ended up in prison and at the end of the movie he was like you know, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of bad, and I've done a lot of good, and I've wrote all these letters to these families, and mm-hmm. some of them will accept my apologies, and some of them will never accept my apologies. Which I mean, understandable, right? Um, and I, I guarantee you that that trial, quote unquote, was broadcasted. Uh, NTSB hearings usually aren't, but no. there was a lot of press there. Yeah. Um. um and I like how he said, he's like, you know, I I may not have done good, but at least I'm sober. Yeah. I, obviously, like Gloria just said, he does end up in prison. Yeah. Because he admits to drinking the vodka. So, right when he gets on the plane, just to set some establishment down, if you're listening to this without watching the movie for some reason, um, go watch this damn movie. Um, it's really good. At least I think so. I uh, thought it was pretty good. But we'll get to that part of the show in a minute. Um, you know, when they get on the plane, oh, he has had a night of drinking and probably... Did a line of coke before he yeah, came in. he did a line of coke to keep himself... Awake. Awake. Um, and then when they get on the plane, he puts he, three bottles of 
a three little nips three little of vodka. Smirnoff, three little Smirnoff nips in his orange shoes. Yep. And drinks it and goes to sleep. Um, and they found those. They and, found two. Yeah, they found two of them. And then um, he later tells everybody, he's like, oh, I had, he had, I had three. Yeah. Well, he tells... He tells Charlie and uh, Hugh, the lawyer. Hugh, yeah. Um, and... The, um... And now it's escaped me. Uh... Yeah, it's completely escaped me. That's Trina. unfortunate. Yeah, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say about, you know, to come back to it, what we talked about at the beginning, yeah, he has the option to, like, admit that he's the one who drank them, or blame Trina. I, I, I kind of had a feeling that they were gonna do that at, in the trial, because mm -hmm. they pulled up her picture, and they were like, oh, did you have any, do you, did you have a certain type of relationship with her, uh, were you guys just colleagues, and then they pulled up her picture, and then asked him that question and i was like oh he's gonna break yeah but did you did you think that it wasn't gonna go his way like up to that point i honestly thought that he was going to get caught and he was ultimately gonna go to jail i thought that he was gonna i thought the movie was gonna be really short really sweet it's really simple like they were gonna <laughs> find him guilty he was gonna go to jail and that was that really yeah, I figured that, you know, they'd have to give the movie some wiggle room here, and they'd have to do it where, oh, the plane crashed, uh, he's in recovery, uh, he tries to get better, you know, he meets somebody, and then they do a trial. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I honestly thought that he was going to get thrown in jail right away, but... Well, I, well, out of curiosity, what point did you switch from, like, oh, he's going to get clean with uh, Nicole versus, oh, he's gonna be a drunk forever and go to jail or did you think he was gonna get clean and still go to jail i thought he was just gonna remain a drunk after uh when nicole after he left the aa meeting and then went back to the farm well the yeah the farm and he nicole walks in and he's like hunched over drunk oh god yeah and then he falls on the floor passes out drunk and there's sober nicole helping him out mm -hmm. you know and then she's like i can't live in this environment anymore and he, like, tries to convince her to go to Jamaica, and <clears throat> he's like, I need to get away. So you're basically trying to flee the country. Yeah, he was literally trying to flee the country. That is such a cringy scene when he's, like, yelling at her from the barn, like, oh, I choose to drink. I choose it. It's it's rough. And it is. It's a rough scene to watch because you're, like, you you know that there's people out there in the world like that, that they choose, they choose alcohol over... Or they choose they choose drugs or alcohol over sobriety and the people that they love, and it's just like I've seen that way too much. And, well, and and I would say it's less of a choice <coughs> and more of a you know this is this is an addicted it's a, it's, person it's, and this is what happens. I th like not to justify alcoholism, but like it's a numbing aspect. You know, you drink so much to not feel anything, and it it's it's. A coping mechanism. Yeah, and and people that have been, you know, there there are reasons that people turn to to alcohol and drugs, etc. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that you know he's saying I choose to drink, I choose to drink, and she says you know I don't see much choice going on, and you know she's absolutely right because he's an addict because mm -hmm. he's a drunk. Uh, uh, it's you know it's this sort of bitter irony in him saying that. Uh, because he is not in control. I, I also wanted to talk about how the paparazzi found him. We're oh, staking God. out his condo, and then they found him at the farm, and they tried to stake him out there. Yeah, I... To come back to the you want to root for this guy, I, despite everything that had been through, I felt bad when he got back to the farm and the paparazzi was there. I felt it's really like, bad, oh, too, man, because this it's is not like, what he needs right now. It's like, he's already down on his luck, and I was like, he does not need this. Yeah. And then he was doing so good before the trial. He said that he said to what the security guard he hadn't had a drink in nine eight day, days, eight days, nine days, twenty eight hours, twenty. Yeah, no, it was like eight days, twelve hours, and twenty six minutes, or something like that. But point is, it had been over a week because he'd been staying with with Charlie, with Charlie, and then um, and then he goes to the hotel and 
He checks the mini fridge because there's usually alcohol. In he the goes mini straight to that mini. He fridge. went straight to the mini fridge, and there was nothing but water, soda, uh, sparkling water, juice, uh, juice, and then he had to find that that room extension. Yeah, he found the doorway into the other room, and he went into the mini fridge there, and he drank everything in the fridge, caused a catastrophe, smashed his head on the toilet, and then and they then had to call when, in. <laughs> that's when <laughs> John Goodman in. comes in. Does what four lines of coke? Something and, like that. And gives him a a, co- uh, a wacky tobacco cigarette. Yep. If you he don't gives know, him a gram if, for later. If you don't know what wacky tobacco it is, it's anything mixed with tobacco and put into a cigarette. So, coke, weed, uh, heroin, whatever, <laughs> whatever your whatever your. Point is, he gives him drugs. Whatever, yeah, whatever you're feeding for, he'll have it. In in front of in front of uh, Charlie his lawyer and his lawyer and his union rep. Yep. Yikes. And then John Goodman's like, you guys want to hit? And they were like, no, we're good. <laughs> and and he almost makes it... Th- I mean, he almost made it through. You could tell he was not happy with his sobriety. Because mm. he was not doing it willingly. Um, and... I had a feeling he was gonna... I That scene where he picks up the nip and he opens it and he smells it. Yep. And then he puts it down. I'm like, oh, good for you. You're going to resist it. And then his hand comes in and it swipes it away. And I was like, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I remember <laughs> you turning to me like, I knew it. I knew yeah. it. I knew it was going to happen. I was like, it... You don't get too many movies these days. And this is part of the reason why I like this movie so much. And why I'm glad we watched it. And watched it for the podcast and stuff. You don't get too many tragedies these days. Mm. Usually movies have a happy ending and i know happy ending is kind of a a, you know it's thrown around so much it's a meaningless word i have a whole segment blocked out that i'd love to do called like do the characters get their happy endings honestly i would argue that he does get a happy ending he does because he ends up sober because he ends up sober i think it's a happy ending because he ended up sober but in the short term you get to watch the downfall of a character and the only difference between this and uh, a more traditional tragedy is he doesn't die at the end. Yes. You know? Um, but in essence, his old self is dead, his new self is born. You could wordsmith that however you want. But my point is... We have to jump uh, into... Uh, we do need to jump into star ratings. My point is, you don't get too many too many movies that go in this direction these days. At least I don't feel like you do. You know, you always get like, oh, you know, traditionally... In the big budget movie, which this is not a big budget movie, but in the more well known movies, there is a there is a resolution that involves the the main characters or main character being in a better place than they than they started off with, and I at the climax, mm-hmm. as opposed to this at the climax. You mentioned that when he was in the hospital, it was his lowest point. No, no, his no. lowest point his lowest is point. at the trial. His lowest point is at the trial. Like, mm-hmm. definitely at the trial, watching... Are you um, looking for it? No, I was looking for my next movie. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, where is it? Go down. I go down? I, I went past it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, what are you giving this? I'm gonna give it five stars. Honestly, this is... I'm I love give it, this movie to death. I'm gonna give it... Uh, four and a half. Four and a half. That's reasonable. I want to give it a four and a half because I, you know, I think that the ca- the cast is great. I think that the 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 acting's on point. Um, I just don't like the fact that it's plates. I just don't. Just don't like the I don't that. like. I don't <laughs> like flying. You know, I'll fly if I have to, but I just choose not to. Listen, if this was a movie about trains. It'd be way weirder that he managed to roll it over. Just saying. But if you want to watch him in a train movie, there is there is one available that I mentioned already. Oh my god. And there's people the people that are here on the Iron Horseman community channel because of the Iron Horseman already remember what I said a few minutes ago. Uh, already know the movie I'm talking about and are already groaning externally. So, um I don't think it's on this list, but let me double check. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There it is. 
right above The Help in 1917 and below Moonrise Kingdom and Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. Unstoppable. Uh, Denzel Washington is an engineer. I think we're going to watch Black Beauty next. Okay. Okay. Switching it up. We're gonna you we're gonna put an animal movie in the mix. Oh man. We've got like two animal movies side by side list is Black Beauty and Sea Biscuit and then the Lone Ranger, which isn't exactly an animal movie, but actually we might watch Cones Coneheads instead. Coneheads. Oh, it's no. a toss up between Coneheads and Black Beauty. People in the comments let Your hand was in front oh, of the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> Let us know, Black Beauty or Coneheads. You know nobody's going to let us know. I right? know, I know. We need to we need to watch a movie before now and between now and the end of the week. Like, yeah, we might I... get one comment from Hemlock. Yeah, I don't know. It's a toss up. We'll do we'll do a heads I vote and tails. For Black Beauty. One, we want to do Black Beauty. I guess. Okay, we can do Black Beauty. Hunts. <clears throat> and then we can uh, then we can watch Unstoppable. Anyway, uh, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Realist Podcast. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, obviously, if you have seen this movie, or if you haven't seen this movie and you have an opinion, which you're, you know, allowed to have. Um, no, you're not. Oh, sorry. I guess you're not if you haven't seen this movie. So go watch this movie and then come back and tell us what you thought of it. Um, it is a two-hour, eighteen-minute movie. It's probably one of the longer ones we've done for the show, if not the longest thus far. Because we haven't watched a lot of long movies for the show. <laughs> Lincoln's uh, a long movie. Well, that's we haven't watched that yet. Um, the Irish I mean, is also a long movie, and that might be on the list, too. I can't, rec- yeah, can't remember. Yeah, I put it on there. Uh, you, oh, you did? Okay. Have you seen it? Nope. I haven't either. My mom has seen it, weirdly enough. Sunset's seen it. Oh, okay. Um, All right. I think we're learning this on a little bit too long. Anyway, yeah, subscribe, like, etc. Uh, we will see you next week with another movie, probably with a horse in it. Uh, maybe a horse, maybe Dan Aykroyd. We don't know. <laughs> maybe both. Uh, maybe. Bye, guys. Bye. Are there any movies with Dan Aykroyd and a horse?